Good morning, Prairie Chapel and St. Paul's. It's good to have you here with us in worship today. As we begin, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together, Lord, that we can lift you up, Lord, and give you praise. Lord, be with us in our homes as we're apart and as we celebrate together. Lord, you go way beyond space and time, and so that in that we know that we're together in you right now in this moment. We give you praise in Christ Jesus' name, amen. believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and of the life everlasting. Amen. This is a time in the service when we would normally have our offering and it's very difficult nowadays for us to do that as we're apart. And so I encourage you though not to um, bypass this idea of worshiping through our gifts and our offerings to the church. And you can do that still by, if you're at Prairie Chapel, mailing it in to Glenda or at St. Paul's, dropping it off in the drop box at the door, or you can mail it off to the church at St. Paul's. Or if you give me a call, I'll make sure somebody comes by your house and picks it up. Let's pray and give thanks for the offering in which we receive. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, and first I thank you so much for those who continue to be faithful in this time and their giving. Right now, Lord, bless the offering we receive. Help it to be for the building of your kingdom. Even in times like this, Lord, we can do so much as a church, and we give you thanks and praise, Lord, through the generosity and grace of those uh, who participate in offering. In Christ Jesus' name, amen.
It's a time that we come together for prayer, and this morning I would like us to uh, consider praying for all of those within our community who've been affected by the virus. Here at Prairie Chapel, we have a couple of prayer concerns. Uh, number one, we give thanks that the one person that was being tested in our family that uh, for the coronavirus it ended up being negative, and so we give thanks to God for that. I'd also like us to lift up uh, Doug in prayer as he continues uh, in the process of healing from his surgery. So we need to lift up Doug and ask that God continue to heal him and bless him with peace uh, and, and uh, reprieve from the, the pain that he's feeling still from his surgery. At uh, St. Paul's, um, we in both churches lift up those who are uh, shut in for a long period of time we know how depressing that can be to not be able to participate with people that we love and so right now we lift up both churches in that uh, as for specific prayer concerns if you have any please uh, email them to me or text me or call me and if you just like to talk i'm always available but right now we're going to light a candle and we're gonna take a moment and lift up our silent prayers to the Lord. 
Let's pray.
Hi, before we get into the sermon today, I, um, I wanted to share uh, a story with you. When I was a young boy, I remember one time being really afraid, and, and my mom came outside and she found me in the bushes. I had hidden myself away. And about my third grade year of school, a friend of mine and me, we were walking home, and um, we were kind of playing around more than we should have been, and when we went out in the street, he ended up getting hit by a car. And uh, all I remember is being afraid. And we had these big bushes underneath our house, and I hid underneath those bushes. And uh, I remember the next thing, uh, and I don't know what, why I was afraid, if I was afraid because he had got hit, or if I was afraid because I was in trouble because he got hit, because we were playing around. But I was. I was afraid. I do remember that. And I remember my mom coming and grabbing me out from underneath the bushes and comforting me. And, and uh, I found myself in a time of fear that I went to a place where I could feel safe. And it's a place where I played all the time. Well, we're going through a time of fear now. And people are locked away in their homes with this uh, COVID-19 virus and everything. And I found this site online that I found really interesting, and it's um, uh, called um, a Quarantine Worship uh, website. And there was a young girl on there who sang a song that I just absolutely loved listening to her because I could feel that very same thing in her music and her song that I felt that day. And that when my mom came and rescued me, how much I felt like my mom loved me. And in the same way how this young lady presents this in all of who she is, just right there in the midst of her place where she feels the most comfortable, mm -hmm. just singing praise to God and feeling the comfort of God's presence. And so today as we begin our sermon and look at this story of the upper room, I'd like for us to just take a moment and just hear a little bit of her music as she sings for us. look at the Gospel of John. Oh, chapter 20, verses 19 through 32, um, which reads, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. 
And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Gripped with fear and unable to move from that upper room, they were hiding behind those locked doors, and Jesus' disciples they sat there in fear of the Jewish officials. They were afraid because um, they, they could, if they could kill Jesus, then they could kill them too. And Jesus' disciples also sat there mourning for their friend and their Lord who had died and the mission that they believed had died with him. And in their grief and in their fear, they had forgotten They've forgotten of who he was, who Jesus was, and the power that he held, and the hope that he had left with them before he left. But now they hid in the upper room together. They were escaping in that small room in Jerusalem. They were locked up behind locked doors because of their uncertainty and, and of their, their fear, but also their, their feeling of, of being lost and not knowing where to turn or wondering what to do next or where to go from there. Have you ever felt that way? I know I have. I don't know if you have, Francis, but there have been many times in my life where I have felt kind of this, this sense of lostness and, and, and uncertainty and, and um, not sure what to do. So if you do, where do you go when you feel that way? I mean, do you lock yourself up in your room and you hide away? Um, where do you go when you feel that way? Well, we're here in my man cave today. <laughs> so, You're what anyway, shot. <laughs> for me, I, I, when I'm feeling um, a little lost or that I just need a place to get away and to think and to hide from the things that I'm afraid of, I usually come out here and I start making stuff. And um, it used to be when I was younger, I'd mow the lawn and, and think, well, the lawnmower was roaring. But now I turn the lathe on and I <laughs> kick up some wood and I'm able to really listen. And, uh, and you know, I, I think God meets us sometimes in the places of silence where we can just get away and lock ourselves in, away from the things of the world, the things that trouble us, the mm -hmm. things that keep us afraid. Mm -hmm. And, and just allow God a moment to, to reach us. And I don't know what the disciples did that day. I, I believe that, you know, sometimes my best thinking happens when my hands are busy and my heart is open. And so I find this wood shop to be a good place. And I find this wood shop is a, is a hideaway for myself as well. Not probably, not as much as Francis, but um, I, it's a place where I too feel like... Um, I can yeah, go. It's a place I want to kick her out. <laughs> Sometimes he tries to kick me out, but but I I enjoy being in here as well. Um, I. Uh, I like to uh, turn turn wood sometimes, sometimes paint, um, but it it is also a place where the distractions of the world or those things that are weighing on my shoulders, where I can just go and be silent and be busy with my hands and to concentrate and to focus. And to listen, to listen to God's still small voice sometimes. You know, I can't imagine what it must have been like for the disciples and such a thing that they went through as, as you know, Jesus being crucified and and the scene of the cross and and you know, even having the, the women approach and to tell them that He's risen and mm -hmm. and here they were, they were afraid, they were locked away in this place, hiding away. Uh, from all of the troubles that they were facing and everything. And I, and I 
can't help but think that it wasn't a place of comfort for them. I, I think they must have felt very comfortable there, and they must have had something that kept their minds occupied and busy. Maybe it was each other. But I think all of us have to have a place of retreat, a place where we can go and just get away from the things. And mm -hmm. it seems like there's the place where Jesus oftentimes meets us. Mm -hmm. that it's in those places mm -hmm. that we retreat, mm -hmm. places that we aren't necessarily expecting God to speak to right. us clearly. That's right. Like he likes to surprise yeah. us, like he did those disciples after the uh, crucifixion after he um, was raised from the grave. Uh, Jesus appears to his disciples in that locked room behind locked doors. And I find it interesting, though, that the first thing that Jesus says to them, he says, yeah. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah, peace. imagine that. And sometimes even, you know, I come out here to find peace, and sometimes it takes quite a while to find that peace, you know. But I think eventually, m most generally, I find peace uh, when, I, when I'm locked away. And, the, and so Jesus came in, and they, they must have still been awful fearful, awful tormented by the days before. And mm -hmm. Jesus says to them, and the very first thing he says is, peace be with you. And I, I wonder if he said, hey, guys, you know, he could have said this. He, hey, guys, what in the world happened to you all? You know, I'm up there <laughs> hanging on the cross, and where did, did you go? He didn't say and, that, uh, But he didn't. He yeah. said, peace be with you. And so, you know, I, I think it was Jesus demonstrating his grace and his love to them by those very first words. Exactly. Because um, he sees his disciples. They're locked away. They're hiding in fear. And um, Jesus stands among them. Um, he stands with them. And in his, uh, his way, in his loving and compassionate voice, he says the words that they most need to hear at that moment. Yeah. He does. Peace be with you. And he showed them um, more about his risen self as well. He yeah. showed yeah. them the palms of his hand, the cut on his side, right. and the wounds that he bore uh, during the crucifixion, and they were still there, and, and Jesus revealed himself in a way that they couldn't deny that it was him, and they experienced in that a newfound peace, a, a renewed strength, a renewed joy, a renewed mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah, and reminding them from, from his hands and from his side um, what they represented, and they represented the wounds that he bore on their behalf, yeah. and how much he loved them, and that he had died for them, and that he was revealing himself again to yeah. them. The wounds were, you know, his symbol right there, physical symbol of his love that true. that he gave for each of them. That's and, right. and, and, it, and how they responded, though, right. when they did recognize that it was the Lord and they did recognize his voice. The scriptures say that they were overfilled, they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Yeah, their hearts were kind of unlocked. And, yeah. And they realized that there was something more to do and this peace be with you. Right. And that was only the beginning of following him. Right. Uh, right. And notice what happened next. He reveals himself to them and he breathed on them and they mm -hmm. received the Spirit. Um, you know, we're going to talk about receiving the Spirit more when we get to Pentecost. And there may have been several different times that they received the Spirit for different purposes and in different ways. Mm -hmm. And at Pentecost, it's for the whole of the church, but here it's for these uh, men in the upper room, these people in the upper room who. Who Christ breathed His Spirit on to to encourage them and strengthen them um, in in something. But you know what I found interesting about that is what the encouragement was pointed toward. What it was pointed toward forgiveness. That's, that's because right. after the Spirit enters them, He says that's right. that basically tells them that they have been forgiven. And that they're to forgive. And when they forgive, that's right. They recognize God's forgiveness toward them. Right. And so in that, 
I wonder in the upper room, like me underneath the bushes, uh, if they felt some amount of guilt, even not understanding what that guilt was. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, you know mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. My love supersedes all of those feelings. My mm -hmm. love for you supersedes anything you put a, could have possibly done That's against right. me. Yeah. And even bearing the cross, um, my love is bigger than that. And, and then nothing can separate us from the love of God. Right. That we could retreat or go to our spaces or our, our rooms or our wood shops yeah. or wherever we go where we feel yeah. like we can, um, you know, hide away from the things of the world that's that's right. heavy on us. Yeah, you know, he they yes. locked the door. And they locked the door. That's Jesus right. comes through this locked door. And that's right. Maybe I need to do that so I can be in here alone more. <laughs> no, but Jesus, he, he, he shows up in this locked that's room. Right. He does. And he demonstrates the slow to them. He demonstrates them. Thing. And then and in the midst of all this, uh, I can't help but think and believe that, that they begin to realize that um, in this risen uh, Christ, risen Lord, that was in their midst, that the mission wasn't dead, as they they may have, they have thought it was. that their calling, their mission, what following Jesus was was just now a beginning, not an ending. When Jesus died, yeah, and and there was this sending out that took place there as well, right. where he sent them as his father is sending me, I send you. And, you know, and so he's sending them out in this whole process. But first he's got to deal with this issue of forgiveness. And fear. And, <laughs> and, and you know, oftentimes what I learn in here is not that I need to forgive others. Not that I even need to forgive God. But oftentimes that I need to forgive myself. Because... I'll be honest with you, I don't focus as much on the failures of others or on the way that I feel like God has failed me. I, I think I I think I've kind of got beyond that. Mm -hmm. But uh, oftentimes I struggle with forgiving myself for the silly things I say and do. And the times when I too, like Peter, deny Christ or like the other <laughs> apostles, um, yeah. walked a different path for a while. So the upper room experience is a, is a wonderful experience, a, a getting away. And so I come today and I, I got a question. And when we look at the risen Jesus and how he breathed this gospel, this Holy Spirit into them in that upper room that day, and he shared to them the gift of of Christ risen, and Christ is risen indeed. indeed. And that the good news good of that, news. and <laughs> the good news of his forgiveness to them and their need to forgive one another, and their need to forgive themselves. That's right. He gave them the power, though, Yeah. through when he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He gave them the power to be able to forgive right. as Christ forgives. Right. And if you forgive someone of their sins, you will be forgiven. And I really think that it's a given that God had already forgave them before he even gave them that last word mm -hmm. And in this passage. Mm -hmm. And so they moved from that place empowered by the strength of the Holy Spirit to forgive themselves, forgive themselves yes. to think ahead, to be encouraged and emboldened and sent out, sent out into the world to do the good work that God had called them to do. And that they weren't alone. They weren't alone in the sending out. Yeah. For Jesus told them, for as the Father sends me, so I send you. And they don't go alone. They go in his forgiveness. Yeah. Amen. Well, it's been good to be here today. I want to get to this block of wood and uh, make something beautiful out of it. What do you think? Do you think I should make a chalice or I guess I could make a pig. Um, yeah, I, I make pigs out of these or I could make a snowman. And there's all kinds of things. Yeah. But anyway, this wood is calling me and we're about done. So I think before we close, let's do this. Let's sing our closing benediction together.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, gracious, gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you, give you, give you peace. Now peace be with you. Amen. Go in God's peace. Amen.